Well, thank you so much and, and good morning, everyone. Um, today's live event is about how you can capitalize on commercial real estate in what is clearly an uncertain market. Um, my name is Jerry Frank, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Stratifolio. We're a cloud-based software solution that is focused on that small to mid-sized commercial real estate owner, people who own retail, office, that kind of thing. Um, and our product is designed to help people save both time and money on managing their portfolio. So today's discussion is all about how to make the most of your portfolio during what is clearly a interesting market in time. We'll say that. So today with us is Dina Zimmerman. She's vice president of SBN Chicago Commercial. And she serves both as the vice president in the Chicago office and as the national retail product council co-chair. That's a lot to say. Um, <laughs> she specializes in the sale and of leasing of retail investment and mixed use development projects. And she has a happy focus on that tenant buyer relationship. Um, and she specializes in finding high quality sites through Chicagoland and across the US for both national operators, franchises, and first time entrepreneurs. So welcome today, Dina. I'm so glad to have you. Oh my gosh, thanks for having me. I'm so excited. Coffee's kicking in, so you've been warned. <laughs> excellent, excellent. So I have Dina's information up here on the screen, but we're just gonna go live so everybody can see full picture of us. Yay. So. Yeah, so really for the, the format for today, like always, is it's about 20 minutes of just conversation. Um, and then we'll leave it open to people who may have some questions. But this is an interesting topic right now. And I know this has been something that you have talked to a lot of your clients about right now. So what what is the most frequently asked question that you're getting at this moment in time? So it's, it's super interesting because... Um, I'm really noticing this trend and I know like when you and I first met when I, you know, mm -hmm. just to give everybody a little background, when I was learning about this awesome uh, tool that uh, Stratus Folio that she uh, created, um, mm -hmm. it was really interesting. So I thought I said, you know, I, I actually think we're going to have a great relationship because I have more clients looking to diversify their portfolios and, you know, smaller portfolios to medium size and really what what you do is perfect for them and that got us into this conversation of you know you don't want to use the r word but um <laughs> you know it is an uncertain yes. time and um i'm really noticing this trend since the pandemic meaning you know when we were really really locked down in that mid 2020 um you know year 2020 i was you know i represent a lot of buyers and tenants so i do i'm pretty much 50 50 leasing and investing and you know unfortunately a lot of my clients had to make some pretty hard decisions about their businesses yeah. during that time and then there were others um you know of course we were all there for them to help them make those decisions and you know thankfully you know, especially with SBA and interest rates, I mean, they were at an all-time low and it gave a lot of businesses an opportunity to, to stay nimble, to pay for their employee, you know, pay their employees' mm -hmm. salaries, to keep their businesses right. running. But it was so interesting because I had others as they started coming out of it who said to me, my lease is coming due, you know, it's coming up. I don't know. I, I think, I mean, I'm here to stay. I want to buy a building or I want to buy a space. And I, you know, I've been doing this 17 years. And so this is, you know, I, I went through this in 2008, 9, 10, right. what have you. a lot of those were tenants where we signed leases then here, the leases are coming due. It's a really interesting shift because I'm seeing a lot of people saying, you know, I, I think I really want to invest in myself and in real estate. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I know right now interest rates look high, but mm -hmm. compared to during the pandemic, of course they are. But if you right. look at, and I, anybody can reach out to me, I can actually send you something that my office puts out. If you look at pre-pandemic, interest mm -hmm. rates are still way lower than they were before. Um, you know, SBA is offering great deals now. I mean, the, you know, I'm, I'm referring mm -hmm. so many clients to them, especially if you're looking mm -hmm. to, you know, um, renovate a space and look for something value add. So I think that's yeah. the biggest co conversation I'm having with people um, as it relates to if they have several locations where they've been leasing, should I continue mm -hmm. to do that? Does it make sense for me to purchase? And of course, here we are in, you know, tomorrow's December, end of the year, yeah. all these supply chain issues happening 
craziness in the world, you know, fear mm-hmm. of again, the dirty R word, or is it, I don't know, right. you know, what am I going to do? And, um, and I, I know you and I were talking right before we jumped on this, I represent a residential real estate firm who's looking to invest in a property, a mixed use property. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. she and I were talking because some of the prices that we're looking at, she's looking in Chicago some of them have been pretty crazy. Um, mixed uses, mm-hmm. like that's probably my favorite, what I like to invest in too, where you've got that, you know, retail or office right. on the first floor and then the residential above. Mm-hmm. And the neighborhood she's looking in, in Lincoln Park, just the prices are just very, they're very tight. Right. And I said, listen, all the people I'm talking to right now who are either selling property or thinking of selling or who want to buy like you, I think we're all going to see this big shift in Q1 of next year. I, and mm-hmm. she said the same thing on the residential side. She has a lot of clients who are waiting because they anticipate a quote unquote fire sale. Yeah. And um, I, listen, there's a great quote that I heard, and I'm probably going to butcher this and everyone says it differently, but in good times, people get rich in uncertain mm-hmm. times is when people become wealthy. And I think, right. you know, this is, there's a lot of really great opportunity and there will be next year, especially Q1 and Q2, um, yes. to invest in property. Um, not, and, and I'm talking, you know, I'm sure people who are watching this now are all across the country. I'm a big believer in these secondary and tertiary markets. That's really mm-hmm. where people, that's the secret sauce, in my opinion, where people should really right. start paying attention. And, and yeah. it's whatever your, you know, whatever your appetite is, right? I mean, I'm a huge mm-hmm. fan, obviously, of retail. I think it's, it's right. uh, you know, we're still watching those Black Friday numbers coming in. But <laughs> I think that's that's looking, especially the value add. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just a big fan of all that. And obviously, you know, the Carolinas and Florida, Texas, they're mm-hmm. great markets to invest in. Yeah. Yeah. I, I read an article earlier as well from Marcus and Millichap, and they were talking about the fact that people who are investing in kind of these downturn times that some of those have been the very best investments they have ever had. So I, I yeah. do feel like this, there's some real opportunity out there. I do too. Have the questions changed over the last six months that you've gotten or have they been pretty much the same? You know, they've changed a bit. And I think, you know, just to, to piggyback off your, um, what your quote from Marcus and Millichap, because again, when I look back, in especially 2010 and 2011, that's when some of my investors made just the best decisions, right? And Mm -hmm. then again, I'm just speaking for myself, the properties that my clients were buying. Unfortunately, some of it was sellers who were forced to sell, um, notes were coming due, they maybe didn't make smart investment decisions. Mm -hmm. Where now that probably unfortunately may still be the case with some people. Mm-hmm. Um, right. I'm seeing a lot more. And this is personally, I think it's because I call yeah. it the pandemic effect. I think some people are just tired and they're like, you know what? I've learned some lessons here. I want to sell my property. I want to retire. And I just, mm-hmm. I want to enjoy my life. And I, I really, I, for whatever reason, I had four people out of the blue wanting to sell property. And I'm like, well, why do you want to sell? All four of them didn't even know each other. I have grandkids who live in California. I'm sick of the Midwest. I think I learned some lessons during the pandemic when I couldn't see people. Mm-hmm. And I, I, so I think that's the biggest burning question people are asking now. Why is somebody selling? You know, mm-hmm. like what's, what's the, you know, is, what's the hook? Is there a problem? Right. right. Not always. Right. And, and right. what's interesting too, is I'm finding we're all doing much more creative deals right now. Mm-hmm. Banks, I think are more nimble. Um, I think we're, we're getting parties together, you know, sellers and buyers or ten- tenants and landlords who are having conversations a lot sooner than they would have mm-hmm. otherwise, meaning, you know, I'm <clears throat> the middleman, right. Or the middle woman, yeah. I should say, and yeah. I'm getting more parties together on the phone. And now that we've got zoom that people are obviously yeah. using a lot more, we're coming to getting solutions solved faster. Mm. And- pushing deals across the finish line a little more smoother than we were before. So I just, I think people are getting more creative. I think that's, what's been different really in the past year. So when you say getting more creative, what are, what are you seeing that's coming out in that conversation between buyer and seller? Well, 
the biggest thing, and again, you're, this is also sort of a hot button for me um, because this is, I feel like this is what conversation I have four times a day um, as it relates to SBA mm -hmm. specifically, most of my clients go that route because so many, you know, SBA is completely inundated right now. Right. Which is great. Right. However, it's those third party reports, the, you know, environmental reports, even the appraisals, so on and so mm -hmm. forth that are really backlogged. So while mm. SBA can close relatively quickly, I mean, we had to wait three weeks for an appraiser a property that I sold about six months ago, which means we're yeah. asking for longer contingency periods. Uh. Well, if a seller needs to get out, he or she doesn't necessarily want to wait 120 days. And right. so it's getting creative with, you know, maybe we're putting down a larger, you know, earnest money deposit or what have mm -hmm. you. And, or it's my job to get everybody realistic. And before I even put in an offer, Hey, my client, Jerry, she's going SBA. This is what mm -hmm. this is going to look like um, right. on the leasing side. Why we have to get more creative and get the parties together. This whole supply chain issue. A lot of the mm -hmm. restaurants I'm working with, um, they can't get their equipment because of that. Oh. And then a few we've had signed leases and we've had a, after the signed lease, go back kind of with our tail between our legs and ask the landlord for additional free rent because they have no staff. You know, it's been a real issue. Right. So it's, it's being creative, being open and um, mm -hmm. being very communicative that um, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. What about um, in terms of financing? Are you seeing anything different there? Essentially, you're saying SBA loans, but anything else from a debt financing perspective? Yeah, I mean, and I have a lot of clients who, you know, are buying their 10th or 20th property and they're going conventional. And um, what I am noticing, though, is a lot of these um, smaller, and I say small, you know, because they're not the big national, but these community banks. I've always been a big fan, right? But mm -hmm. I just find them to be a lot more nimble and again, super creative because, you know, they're, you know, if this is a business that's been up and running for several years, you know, yeah. fortunately or unfortunately, they're also looking at the P&L statements from 2020, which can, can be completely skewed. I'm noticing very favorably, a lot of banks, I'm not saying are being, are forgiving that, but they're also right. saying, all right, listen, we get that that was a blip. Let's yes. let's look at other things and try mm -hmm. and get creative because we do want to help you with this loan. I'm finding that banks are way more creative. Again, I'm using that word, but it's the truth. Um, and lending to people that they maybe wouldn't have 10 years ago. And mm -hmm. um, I think that that's a positive sign on... on um, businesses, you know, that their belief in yeah. some of these businesses. So, um, cause that's the biggest thing. A lot of business owners I work with specifically women mm -hmm. will say to me, oh, I'm too nervous to apply for a loan. You know, I'm just going to get investors or mm -hmm. I just need to save money. And, you know, and I, I do notice this shift, especially with women for whatever reason. Well, I know exactly mm -hmm. the reason, cause it's this <laughs> imposter syndrome that I have myself. Right. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. um, and I tell them that I'm like, you at least have to ask the question and go through the process because mm -hmm. if you are eligible, you know, why use that hard earned cash that you have? That's, that's your liquid cash that you can run your business, right. do other things with your business. And right. I think that's been the biggest thing is people just not having the fear of, of being rejected. And listen, mm -hmm. that I just bought a house a few months ago and I was so afraid. I'm like, Oh God, how am I ever going to get approved for anything? I'm ridiculous. I mean, that was ridiculous. That was the easiest right. process ever. Thanks to Beth Azor in case she's listening. She's the one who pushed me to do that. <laughs> so I, I think it's, it's also exploring all of your options. Um, mm -hmm. So you can really hang on to your money and use it in a really smart and thoughtful way, which yep. is why now is the time. If you are interested in investing <clears throat> to talk to your financial planner and to understand your options. And if you do have properties, Mm -hmm. you know, to consult with the broker. Um, yeah, of course I like to do transactions. That's how I make money, but also my job is an advisor and all of us, right. for those who are in this for the right reason, mm -hmm. maybe you don't exactly. want to sell today, but let's look at what you're, what you've got 
and what mm-hmm. your options are in the future, just so you can make a really smart decision and make right. sure you're cash flowing to your um, max potential. Right. Yeah. And, and kind of on that point with, with the lenders, um, is there anything that you're seeing that helps those lenders be more um, willing to give a loan? Have you seen, is there anything that you could recommend to our, our viewers of make sure you have X, Y, and Z when you go have that conversation? Yeah. Um, it's, it's really interesting because everybody hates all the paperwork they have to fill mm-hmm. out. And I know that really sucks, but, um, the more information you can give to a bank, even if you don't think it's relevant, it's crazy how some of this stuff is relevant. I mean, right. I'm working with somebody right now and they're not exactly sure what they're going to qualify for. So we went ahead and identified some properties they were really interested in. And I, I gathered brochures, I gathered, you know, tax information. Mm-hmm. Um, I had them do two to three year, you know, um, projections mm-hmm. and, and even just sent all of that to the bank and like, listen, this is roughly the price point we're looking, average taxes on both buildings. And the, the, the lender at this smaller SBA bank was like, Dina, that, that is so helpful even just to have a brochure because our underwriting department at least has like an example that they can go off of. So what seems kind of unnecessary um, can actually be really necessary. So I just think the more information you can share, the better. Mm-hmm. And yeah, don't be afraid to go for it um, yeah. because you got to start somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we work with a lot of um, customers who have lots of different lending relationships. And we also talk to a lot of lenders and what they like like for, for using a product like Stratifolio is there is a complete rent roll. There are complete data so that that yeah. lender doesn't have to fill in the gaps themselves because when they fill in the gaps themselves, sometimes they don't fill it in the way you would want them to. Exactly. And you really, you hit the button. <laughs> Again, another pressure point here with the rent roll. It is unreal to me how some, especially groups or <clears throat> individuals who have a portfolio of properties, and it could be even just three or four, I shouldn't say just that's, you know, Mm -hmm. every property is important. But when I asked for a rent roll, some of them are like, what are you talking about? Like, do you not No, this is this is why they need you, they need a broker, they need a great account, they need whatever, because who knows how much money they're losing by not keeping track, you know, just of of their monthly expenses in and out. So Exactly. Yeah, that's that's incomplete rent rolls have been the difference, not just in thousands, but tens and hundreds of thousands when it comes to what a client can get um, mm-hmm. in, in terms of a lending perspective. Yeah, yeah, actually, um, that, that kind of brings up another point, because now, as you think about these owners who maybe have been somewhat remiss in handling their cam reconciliations or now, given, you know, rolling over in previous years, maybe wasn't such a big deal, but now it's yep. because of increasing prices, it is critical that they actually do that on a timely basis yep. and adjust correctly. Because if they don't do it, that is just all hitting to their very bottom line. Well, and and let's talk about taxes for a second. Anybody who's yeah. in, especially Chicago right now, you know, they're that's become a real hot button too. And let me tell you, that's a tough one when people are looking to expand, whether it's leasing or purchasing, because all of a sudden you do have a budget monthly. And sometimes if the taxes go up, that's your monthly budget right there. So right. it, it, it's really hard to make those numbers work. And again, you have to look long-term. So it's it's really you know evaluating yeah. not just what it looks like today, but what it looks like even three years from now. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, given the, um, or is there anything else that you wanted to talk about today? I mean, I could go on and to... on about this all day long. <laughs> I just, I do think there is, there's nothing but opportunity yes. for, for people. As long as you stay ahead of any perceived issues. And again, it's just, it's asking even if it's the tough questions and, you know, reaching out to, you know, trusted advisors and 
just believing in yourself. I mean, again, I can't, I can't say that enough because I just, mm-hmm. I hear too many people, especially going back to the lending side. Oh, maybe in a couple of years, no, at least ask the questions now. And mm-hmm. maybe it's still going to be in a couple of years, but, but, you know, set yourself up for success to hit the ground running. Yeah. I, I think that's a really good point. Um, now more than ever, you need to have those trusted advisors who have been through seasons. You need to have the processes and the technology in place so that you can run as efficiently as possible. Oh, hundred percent. You know, and that is such a good point. It's, it's a, talking to those people who've been through this before. Mm-hmm. Um, but that being said, I know this isn't exactly on the topic, but um, I, I'm talking to so many uh, young people college students who are getting into commercial real estate. I didn't even realize that this was a path like when I was in college, which my whole life would have been different because it's amazing. (laughs) And a lot of them are graduating and, you know, starting to interview, whether it's with my firm or with other firms. And I've had a few ask me, am I crazy for wanting to do this next year? Because, you know, if there is a recession Mm -hmm. looming, although whether there is one or isn't my opinion, I don't think it's going to be even half as bad as it was you know, 12 plus years ago. Um, but what I say to them is that's when I got into the business. I got my license in 2007 and one of my mentors, I, I actually said the exact words to him. Am I crazy for doing this? Cause we knew there was this huge bubble. And he was the one that said to me, there is nothing but opportunity in markets like this. Mm-hmm. If people look for it. And if you can be successful in a downturn, you will always be successful because that's the one guarantee. Right. It's everything cyclical, right? We will always right. go through a downturn, yes. however that looks. And mm-hmm. if you can find a way to be successful in that, you're always going to be successful. And that's what I'm saying to these, these college students right now are people just getting into commercial. Like there's, there's nothing but opportunity. And, you know, mm-hmm. you hook yourself up with somebody who's <clears throat> seasoned and been through this before, ask a ton of questions. You're going to learn a lot and you're going to go mm-hmm. on this ride with your clients, which is the most honorable, like that's my greatest honor, right? We're, we, yeah. we, we're through this, we're going through this together, arm in arm. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, what we're seeing across our customer base as well is, is this is not a time where people are pulling back. They are, no. they're expanding. And I, I think we're going to continue to see that. So um, yeah. k- kudos to you for being there for all of your clients. And I, I, I right think back at you. Of, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and okay. you will be able to see uh, Dina's contact information um, if you want to reach out to her. And I also want to mention that next, um, in a couple of weeks, we're going to be having another uh, LinkedIn Live. And this is going to be with Chris Peters from Stack Source. And oh. Stack Source, yeah, yeah. Stack Source is an online platform for commercial real estate financing that also is another creative way to approach um, financing. Um, And their goal is really to bring modern technology to an old school way of doing commercial real estate financing. So that will be our next LinkedIn Live. Well, thank you so much, Dina, for joining. um, And I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Thank you so much for having me, Jerry. You're awesome. This was a fun conversation. All right. Take care, Dina. Have a great day. Thanks, everybody. All right. Bye. Bye.